Thank you very much, ladies, for the beautiful tribute, and may you also be comforted. I'll now invite Ken Mijungu, the Deputy Broadcast Editor at KTN News, to give a tribute on behalf of the Standard Group. God is good. And all the time to the church, the family, the colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, and our cherished friends. Today we gather to honor the memory of a remarkable soul, a gentle giant whose impact resonates far beyond the confines of our hearts. Rita Tinina, a name etched in our collective consciousness, leaves behind a legacy that defies mere words. As we navigate the delicate terrain of grief today, let us also take time to celebrate the luminous life she led. My name is Ken Mijungu, and I stand before you as a representative of Standard Group, a family to which Rita devoted more than a decade of her unwavering commitment, KTN News. The television station she graced with her presence owes much of its essence to her tireless dedication. Rita was not only an employee, she was the heartbeat of our newsroom, a beacon of integrity, curiosity, and so much grace. Individually and collectively, we mourn Rita's passing. Indeed, the media fraternity fills the void left by her absence. That absence is a silent echo, a missing note in the siphony of truth-telling. Rita's journalistic prowess transcend headlines. It wove narratives that touched many lives, challenged the norms, and sparked conversations. She was more than ink on paper. She was the voice of the voiceless, the seeker of hidden stories. To Rita's beloved daughter, Mia, though our paths had not yet crossed until this morning, your mother's kindness painted vivid portraits of you. In the many photographs of you she shared with me, I glimpse resilience, determination, and spirit, and yielding to live storms. Rest assured, Mia, the world will not forget you. Your mother's legacy lives on in your every step and your every choice. Your mother loved you. Many would ask, why would Rita share with me photos of Mia and tell me her progress? Takes me back to 2017, when out of nowhere, Rita called me and told me, can I need a car? And I asked her, which car do you want? She told me a Vanguard. And I asked her, what's your budget? She told me, you tell me how much it will cost. Then I told her between 1.7 million and 2 million shillings. Rita told me, is that the over top, top, top Vanguard? I said, 2 million shillings is a lot of money for Vanguard. The next thing she said, to my account. She never bothered me until I delivered the car at I and M. To the extended Japan family, dear friends, and the church community, we extend our heartful condolence for Leni Sana. May the balm of time ease your pain, and may memories of riches, laughter, and wisdom bring solace to you. As we grapple with the unanswerable, why she? Why now? Let us also remember that God's timing is sovereign. He gives and takes. Yet his love remains unwavering. Mark 4.1.3 reminds us, And he rose and rebuked the wind and commanded the sea, Peace be still. The question is, when Rita was passing in her sleep, where was her God? The same place God was when the sun was being nailed on the cross. That was where God was. Now Rita's departure leaves us yearning for unwritten chapters, the stories she would have penned, the truths she would have unearthed. 
she was more than a journalist. She was a seeker of justice, a weaver of narratives, and a guardian of democracy. Her diligence, incisiveness, and unwavering commitment to truth were her gifts to our newsroom. In the corridors of the newsroom, Rita was not just a colleague, she was a confidant, a sounding board, and a friend. She trusted my judgment. Every time she would send me a script, I would tell her, and Delia, because I knew that script was solid. Challenge my assumption and sought guidance, especially when navigating the labyrinth of politics and legal intricacies. Rita's impact transcends headlines. It resides in the lives she touched, the stories she told, and the truth she upheld. And as we bid farewell to this gentle giant today, let us remember Rita Tinina not with tears of sorrow, but with the resolve to carry forward her torch. Let us be the storytellers to the seekers of truth, the guardians of justice. Rita's legacy beckons us to write our chapters in courage, compassion, and unwavering commitment. May her soul find eternal rest, and may her light continue to guide us through the uncharted waters tomorrow. Rest in peace, Rita. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Ken. I will now invite Lina Skaikai, who is not only a friend and former colleague, but also the group editorial director and head of strategy at the Royal Media Services, to give his tribute. beings are perhaps the only of God's countless creatures granted knowledge of the inevitability of death. But on a day like this, we are in a most cruel way reminded of just how pointless and how worthless that knowledge is. Because in its wake, Death, assuredly, leaves us defeated and frustrated, bitter and helpless. On days like this, we tearfully turn to God, our maker, with a myriad of questions. Questions which we soon realize will not even be answered on this side of our existence. As a Christian fraternity, we shall later this week be reminded of the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the peak of his torture on the cross, we shall be reminded this Friday, precisely at around 3 p.m., of Jesus' agonizing cry, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabachthani. We know what that means. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the sharpest age of suffering and in the deepest end of our grief, we too get there as our faith is tested to the limit as we seek to ask God, why? Or even, where were you? To the family of Rita, the Yapan family, to my brother Robert Nagila, and to beautiful Mia, we share your pain and stand with you. We humbly come to you at this time like a lifeless, the Tamanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Naamanthite, the three friends who visited Job after all the losses he suffered. And like them, we acknowledge 
today that no words that we speak today will be adequate to take away your grief. My last encounter with Rita was a month ago, right outside this church, next to the bookshop to be precise. It was Ash Wednesday, the first day of this very Lenten season. Rita was a devout Catholic and a stickler of the church's deep traditions and its very elaborate liturgical calendar. And as the high pressure nature of the Ash Wednesday Masses, for those who know hourly Masses here, our encounter ended up really brief. We agreed to catch up soon it was never to happen. Nevertheless, I will always hold to many great memories of one of the finest human souls. In her core, in her most core, Rita remained in Nairobi as close as possible to the earnest wishes of any mother a good child and a meaningful adult. Always proper, always well put together. Now the villager in me is tapping up. And yes, those like me and like Rita, born and raised up in the rural areas, always tend to judge people on these streets by how much Nairobi has destroyed them. And trust me, nothing beats a rural eye, that eye of a shag's mondo, when it comes to impact assessment. Rita withstood the polluting side of Nairobi, and she died intact. Success, fame, and money did not distort who she was at the core. So, where others get panel beaten by what we in the village called call Ulimwengu, or what you Nairobians call character development, Rita navigated this complex urban maze and flourished almost entirely out of the unfailing nutrients of good upbringing. I want to mean this as both a sincere tribute to Rita and a compliment to the family that brought up Rita. It is her strength of character and clarity of purpose that made every other story about Rita possible. One such big story, it's shared here many times, is her success in the career as a journalist. Rita was one of the reporters in the NTV newsroom when I joined the National Media Group in 2009 as the managing editor of the broadcasting division. We had interacted many times before, especially in the field covering news, but this became our first time to work closely together in the same newsroom. I quickly got to learn more about her journalistic attributes, such as her strong scripting skills and her legendary ability to beat deadlines. But one attribute always stood out for me, her disposition, her general professional attitude. In journalism, this is a big deal. A good attitude matters, and Rita always displayed the very finest. This made her the jewel of the newsroom. In a reporter, every newsroom leader looks for reliability, and Rita personified reliability. Rita's great, greatest, greater possibilities came alive in 2010 when we started pushing the limits of live television news 
among other ambitious editorial experiments at NTV. As the Nation Media Group marked 50 years of its existence, we rolled out our first start-to-end outdoor news bulletins from the KICC. Later in the year, we had the referendum on the Constitution with our rolling coverage starting three days ahead of the August 4, 2010 vote on the new Constitution. I remember in her referendum day sign-off, Rita's three words somehow ring sad today. This is it. It was after the 2010 referendum that Rita was introduced to Anchoring News when we launched a live on location three day TV magazine Weekender called the County Edition, for which I was ably assisted to produce by Joe Agel, who was the head, was the head of news gathering, news uh, production, and Emmanuel Juma, who was the head of news gathering. For the toil and sweat this took, I will not at this point separate the story of Rita from that of every member of one of the greatest broadcast newsrooms ever assembled in Kenya's media history. Rita's County Edition colleagues share every bit of that glory, as she does, as does the entire team that spectacularly and comprehensively covered the South Sudan independence referendum and the Ugandan elections immediately after. I am certain that Rita's spirit floating above us right now draws most of its smiles from those amazing memories and experiences. And I'm sure, colleagues, that Rita's spirit is proud of each one of you. I will not avoid to talk about Rita's physical attributes. As a journalistic, editorially ascertainable fact, Rita was beautiful. Secondly, she was smart, mentally and physically. Rita was an impeccable dresser. Fashion was her friend. She favored serious business like suits and trendy, even if with feminine cuts. There would be an occasion for a jeans trouser for a rough news gathering day, but the bottom line, Rita always dressed very smartly. One time, a persistent villager in me dared, dared me to advise a member to dress like Rita. The next day, I bumped onto the subject of my advice and the question came, so am I dressed like Rita? My village instincts picked this very quickly, that this is, not an, this is not a question. It was an invitation to war. To my younger colleagues managing newsrooms, just learn how to communicate with ladies. Don't you dare draw parallels, even if in the name of freedom of expression. At this point, I still struggle to believe this is all about death. And indeed, the death of Rita Tinina Yapan. So I'd best take it back where we began. That is, back to God's own doorstep. In probing the depth of the mystery of death, we may have to settle on some assumptions like Maybe, just maybe, God grants us life as a loan. And just maybe, that loan that our life is does not even have a repayment schedule. And maybe, God can recall that loan as he wills. On Friday this, 
this coming Good Friday, we shall be reminded of that very final cry of Jesus before he died on the cross. Father, unto you I commit my spirit, and to God we commit the spirit of Rita Tinina Yapan. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I will just quickly call Mr. Joagel, Editor-in-Chief, the Nation Media Group, to give his brief remarks. And just to let you know, we have a mass that will be happening here. There will be a mass, rather not we have. There shall be a mass after this. That's why we are trying to wrap it up and vacate the hall. Thank you. The Reverend Taji, the Yapan family, uh, friends and colleagues who have come to help us bid farewell to a great Kenyan and a great journalist. When I was coming here uh, over an hour ago, I received a message from an old friend who uh, wished me God's grace and comfort as I came for this event. Um, and she said, uh, it must be difficult as you give a send-off to a dependable team member. Now, dependable team, team member is one of the attributes, but it is an understatement of who Rita Tinina was. Um, in all the newsrooms that I've worked with her, she was not just a dependable team member. She was the ultimate team player. She was a consummate professional, as many of us have said. And so for us at the Nation Media Group, um, the board of directors, the man management, and the whole family, and indeed the entire media fraternity, we just want to thank you very much for donating to us such a wonderful gem for the 20 uh, or so years that uh, she was in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last one week or so, the country has witnessed an outpouring of tributes as we continue to celebrate the legacy of my colleague and friend who departed from our midst so suddenly. Today we gather yet again to reflect on the profound impact that Rita had on Earth through her exceptional storytelling that has been talked about all week and her remarkable character. It has been said, and it is indeed true, that Rita was more than just a journalist. She was a beacon of truth and compassion. Her words, like gentle waves, touched countless lives, and her personal attributes left an indelible mark on all who knew her. In her pursuit of truth and justice, Rita's narratives transcended the boundaries of mere news. They resonated with the hearts and souls of her audience, as the last one week has so profoundly demonstrated, stirring emotions, provoking thought, and inspiring change. Beyond her professional achievements, Rita's warmth, kindness, and unwavering integrity left an enduring legacy that will continue to illuminate our paths long after her earthly journey has ended. And many people here have talked about who Rita was. And I could repeat everything that my colleagues have said, Lina's, um, and indeed even people from the family and all the friends and colleagues who have spoken. But this morning, because Rita was the kind of person who found a different way to tell every story. I choose to express the feelings of so many in this room and to immortalize her legacy in a brief poem that I worked on as I prepared for this day. And it is just titled, Rest in Peace, Gentle Giant. 
And if I don't recite the poem the way you would, focus on the words. In the hallowed halls where angels tread, we gather neath the cross, hearts heavy as lead. For Rita, a beloved soul has found her rest in the arms of the Father forever blessed. Two decades hence, our paths did twine in television's realm, a stage divine. Yet, twas Rita's spirit, pure and true, that graced our lives with gentle hue. Her integrity, a beacon bright, in a world oft shrouded in darkest night. With grace and poise she trod the way, a muse of hope in every day. From the Hague's halls to the distant glades, Rita's voice rang out in serenades of truth and justice boldly sung in tales spun true in every tongue. Now, as we bid our dear friend adieu, her memory like a morning dew shall linger on in whispers light to the dawn of eternal light. Rest in peace, dear Rita, in God's embrace, in the glory of his mercy and grace. Thy legacy of kindness and truth ever bright shall guide us home in his holy light. I thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. And now our last tribute will be by the Cabinetary, the Ministry of Information, Communications, and the Digital Economy, Eliud Owalo. Karibu. <laughs> 